Hi, I'm Richard from Drive Green, and today we're going to be spending some time with the electric Hyundai Kona. Uh, the Kona deserves to be one of the most popular electric cars on the market, and today I'm going to share some of my experience with this great car to help you decide whether it might be the right EV for you. The Kona EV got its UK launch in 2018. It was a very eagerly anticipated car that was set to lead the EV market at the time due to its massive driving range in a car of this value. It was launched with a 64 kilowatt hour battery, giving it a massive advertised range of over 250 miles. This was groundbreaking at the time, with Hyundai's competitors such as Nissan and Renault still producing cars with maybe 140 to 160 miles worth of driving range. Other companies still producing cars around 120 miles of range or even less. At this point in time, these 200 mile plus ranges were seen almost exclusively as the territory of Tesla and at a premium car price point as well. And then along came the Kona with its Tesla rivaling range at half the price. The Kona totally led the way as a modern, affordable, long range EV. The Kona has a quite funky, compact SUV design. It's actually quite nice and stylish, but ultimately quite unoffensive. Distinctive, yet not outrageous. Personally, I quite like the way it looks with its quirky crossover SUV styling. Um, it also comes in some, some rather fun colours like this lovely metallic orange we've got with us today. The Kona is what I would guess would be referred to as a compact SUV. It has a tall upright stance and an elevated driving position which is very fashionable and comfortable. It's not a big car, but it's not a small car either. It's a kind of a compromise size between the size and practicality of a big SUV, whilst at the same time not being unwieldy or difficult to manoeuvre. Overall, I think it's ideally sized for a day-to-day -day car. Compact enough to be good at darting around town, but also just about big enough to be the family car. Obviously, boot size is very important when you're judging a car in terms of its practicality. And to be honest, I would like to have seen the Kona have a bigger boot in order to fully fulfill the family car role. However, there is some additional storage underneath the boot floor and the seats do split and fold quite flat. Plus, it also has roof rails, so fitting a roof box is nice and easy. So I think with some sensible packing, the Kona would still work as the family holiday car. The Kona is available in two interior trims and spec options. You've got the Premium and then you've got the Premium SE, uh, the latter being the highest spec option and also the most popular seller. Today we're driving the highest spec Premium SE model, which has a really nice, stylish designed, well put together interior. Um, you've got a really nice media centre, it's all done very, very nice. There's quite a bit of plastics, but it's still a high quality finish. And of course, you've got these lovely leather seats as well. The seats are very adjustable with motorised controls, including a bolster adjustment, and they're even cooled as well as heated. The leather is high quality and is available as a pale grey, as well as this darker grey we have in the car here today. It is a very nice interior with some lovely top spec premium car touches. The lower spec premium model of course doesn't have these lovely heated and cooled leather seats, however it's still a quality interior and it's still very nice and comfy. I would, however, still recommend going for the Premium SE model if the budget permits. This is a special car uh, and it's nice to have a special interior that matches it, I think. Um, Spec-wise, the Kona really does excel and stand out from the competition. Particularly the Premium SE model has, well, pretty much every bit of spec I can possibly think of, with the possible exception of autonomous driving and self-parking features. It has a reversing camera as well as parking sensors front and rear climate control which runs from a very efficient heat pump system, smart adaptive cruise control, auto lights, auto wipers, auto dip rear view mirror, lane keeping assist, blind spot warnings, keyless entry and a winter preheating function. It has heated steering wheel in addition to the heated and cooled seats, an electronic handbrake, three selectable driving modes and an awesomely good Krell sound system. It also has auto high beams and an all-round excellent media centre. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are also a standard even in the earlier 2018 models. It may not have Tesla's autopilot, but it does have radar-guided cruise control and a lane assist. Uh, together, um, they more or less make the car drive itself. Obviously, the adaptive cruise control will do the accelerating and braking and maintain a certain distance between you and the vehicle in front and the lane assist will do the steering to help keep you in lane. Uh, a bit like I'm doing now, 
you know, it, fundamentally, it's doing the accelerating and braking and steering for me, even if you really shouldn't consider it a full-on autonomous driving car. But the tech is there and it's very impressive. In the lower spec model, you do of course lose those leather seats. Uh, you also don't have the amazing Krell sound system and you lose the smart cruise control. However, it's still a very well spec car nonetheless, especially for its price. In terms of battery size, the Kona is available in two battery sizes. You've got the more commonly selected 64 kilowatt hour model, uh, and then you've also got the slightly lower range 39 kilowatt hour model. The 39 kilowatt hour model still do a very respectable sort of 160 miles worth of driving range, depending on time of year and your driving style. And it may only be a 39 kilowatt hour battery, but it kind of pretty much almost competes with a lot of the 50 kilowatt hour batteries that are available on the market. As high end, I certainly have got the efficiency of this car right down. But the same is true of the 64 kilowatt hour battery. I mean, you're looking at a fairly comfy sort of 250 miles worth of driving range. In most other electric cars, it will take a battery substantially bigger than 64 kilowatt hours to achieve that kind of range. At 250 miles of driving range, the Kona can easily stand shoulder to shoulder with any electric car hitting the market at the moment. In terms of what battery size you need, it's important to look at your, um, well, your driving lifestyle really, in particular the, uh, the length and the frequency of the longer journeys. You might well find when you analyse your driving patterns that actually 160 miles and a 39 kilowatt hour battery will be more than sufficient. And whilst it's always nice to see a great big range on the dash, uh, you might find that actually it's quite unnecessary for you. And obviously, if you can, um, if you can go for a 39 kilowatt hour battery, there are some savings to be made. It is, however, worth pointing out that the 39 kilowatt hour battery model is a little bit slower than the 64 in terms of off the line acceleration, just in case that's important to you. The Kona is such good value for its range, and despite being more expensive than the smaller 39 kilowatt model, the bigger 64 kilowatt model is still highly affordable and, quite frankly, a bargain for what it can do. Drive-wise, the Kona is very comfortable, very enjoyable. You've got a nice high seating position and good visibility. You know, despite its high riding crossover SUV styling, it still handles very well and corners very good. It really is a really nice car to be behind the wheel of. Really enjoyable drive. The Kona has four adjustable regen braking settings and you set it using these paddles just behind the steering wheel. It's very nice to have the adjustment so easily accessible just there. And when you've got it set to the higher settings, you get to enjoy that full-on effortless one-pedal driving style that is so important in an EV. The Kona is obviously a great long-range EV because it has that amazing range to begin with. However, if you are going on a longer run that's outside of that range, you can, of course, rapid charge the car. Now, the Kona can accept 100 kilowatts of rapid charge where you can find a suitable charge point. And on a 100 kilowatt hour rapid charge, you can charge as much as 150 miles worth of range back into this car in just a 30 minute charging stop. I have to say, I'm so impressed with the Kona and I really do like it. Obviously, you've got that fantastic driving range, but also you've got a stunning amount of spec as well and at an incredibly great value price. Not only that, you've got a stylish, well-made, well-sized car that's also really enjoyable to drive. If you're looking for a medium-sized, long-range EV, then you really must consider the Kona. It is a great car, it's great value, and it's got a truly impressive driving range. I hope this video has been useful in helping you learn a bit more about the electric Kona. If you'd like to find out more or arrange a test drive, please do get in touch. Thank you ever so much for watching and please be sure to check out our other videos.